<laughs> no, I'm yeah, here's Craig. He he is 1099. Okay, awesome. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Oh, awesome. There it is. All right, we got you. Um, yeah. Okay. I think this is all we're going to have. So if you guys want to go ahead and jump it off, um, this thing will be recorded though, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Let's go ahead and kick it off then. Okay. Sweet. Um, welcome Logan and Craig. Uh, my name's Ryan. We're from Insight Tax. I'm Mandy. So I'm the one that actually personally works for Jeff doing his bookkeeping taxes. We've done the whole profit first consulting. So any questions, I'm going to kind of address them. Okay. I'm Mitch. Nice to meet you, Mitch. So, um, how many 1099 coaches do you guys have that can? Uh, starting 2018, we're going to have at least at least four. It might actually be five or six. Okay. Are you the GM, Logan? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Sweet. Okay. Yeah, we'll record this. So any questions they have, or they can watch this, and they can hopefully get their questions answered. And you know, really, our goal is to help you guys save a ton of money on your taxes because we hate the IRS. And Fair enough. we want you guys to keep more money in your pocket. So that's our goal today. If you have any questions at all throughout, just stop us. Um, but I just wanted to ask kind of real quick, Craig, um, just to get a little background, a little bit about you. What, what kind of coaching do you do for the gym? Are you personal training? Do you do the group, the group wads? What uh, what kind of is your background there? Uh, I mainly do the group wads, but I do also do personal training. Awesome. So. Okay. Sweet. Did you uh, did you work out today? What was the wad? I haven't worked out today. No. Uh, we I coached this morning. We had a, our team meeting, and then I ran home for this. Oh, nice. So. <laughs> nice. What what was the wad today? Uh, strength was push press, nice. and then. Uh, the wad is some running, burpees, <laughs> front rack reverse lunge. So it's a leg day. Dang. Um, we did uh, we did Glenn today. <laughs> and oh, that's a tough start. So. And it's 25 degrees here in Utah. Oh, oh so, wow. wow. Running, running two miles today was not fun. No. <laughs> nah. but, but, yeah, it took me uh, 41 minutes. That's bad. It's respectable. Yeah, but it was it was rough. Those burpees, just I hate burpees so bad. Yeah. <laughs> but cool. So good. We're uh, we're gonna get things kicked off. Um, really, we're gonna show you some strategies, some methodologies that you guys can do as CrossFit coaches specifically um, to leverage your situation like even more than before. Um, we know taxes aren't that sexy, but saving a ton of money is. So we're gonna show you how to do that. So these guys are the tax geniuses. I, I do our marketing here. Um, so I might, uh, you know, pipe in a few comments here and there, but really these guys are the masterminds that will help you uh, save a lot of money, so. We, I mean, we get going and we're used to speaking accounting terms. So Ryan helps kind of reiterate it where we don't sound so stupid or anything because we talk it every single day so it's hard to make sure we're making sense to everybody so but if you do have questions interrupt us let us know we want it to be beneficial to you guys so as they come up just interrupt us real quick um okay. what we will be covering though is the expenses to be keeping track of what type of entity to have set up for being a 1099 um, and then we'll go with there's one additional tax strategy that we want you guys to learn about and implement um so I'll kind of just jump right into it. Expenses. You guys are keeping track of all these expenses already, or you're spending, you're accumulating all these expenses. We just want you guys to keep track of them. So specific expenses for the CrossFit industry. You guys are purchasing outfits. You have to have a certain appearance. You have to have a certain dress code to where you can get some Lululemon pants or anything, your Reebok CrossFit uh, specific shoes, anything that is specific, so your workout attire, you can actually keep track of that as an expense and write that against the income you're making from Canon. So we've got gym clothes, we have supplements, any before workout, after workout, protein bars, um, anything like that, we now get to keep track of it and take it as an expense. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get a lot of expenses to where we can decrease the amount of income you're showing from the gym. Because you guys are being taxed as a business. 
whether you have an entity set up or not, when you're a 1099 contractor, the IRS is classifying you as a business. So you're being taxed a little bit differently than you would just being a W-2 employee. So that's why we want you to try to think of as many expenses as possible to offset this income. So some other ones, I mean, that are pretty, you know, explanatory for any type of business, cell phone, your personal internet, um, your, when you're driving from your house to the gym, you get to write off those miles. So all these different expenses we now get to keep track of and reduce the income that you're getting. Now, that's not the gas. That is the mileage itself, right? Not how much right. they put in their car. It's the actual yes. mileage. Yes. So there is. Go ahead. Is that, like a certain, is that like a certain rate per mile? There is. Every single year, it's a different rate. Um, so basically, what we say is, if you give us the mileage, you know, estimate eight thousand, ten thousand, however many miles. We'll do the comparison of the rate every single year. So ninety-five percent of the time, mileage is going to be a better deduction. Right. Mileage or actual. We've kind of figured that mileage is easier. I mean, yes, yes, but it's a big deduction. So we do want you guys to keep track of your miles. When you're trying to go pick up supplies or you're going to the bank or anything that is related to the gym, you guys get to keep track and write that off. Okay. Um, so some other ones. Um, so I know, and how we're kind of looking at this is you guys as a coach have to have a certain appearance. You are advertising yourself for the gym. You're saying, let's come to the gym. I want you to start doing this and this and this. You're gonna have an outcome like this. So you guys do have to eat healthier. You're going to the organic food uh, stores. You're going to Whole Foods, Sprouts, anything like that. If you're purchasing items from there, we can pick that up as an expense. When you're purchasing items from a local grocery store like Walmart or some big chain store, those expenses I want you to run through your personal. So see the difference? Instead of keeping track of, let's buy some organic cage-free eggs. Those are gonna be five bucks. You get regular eggs, it's two dollars. Instead of keeping track of that difference, that three dollars, I'm just saying completely wash out whatever the difference is and just pick up the expenses from the natural food places. Do you guys have questions on that? No, that makes sense. Okay, so two items you can never deduct. Um, one is the rent or the mortgage for your primary residence. Two is personal groceries. So just like I talked about, when you're going to Walmart or local stores like that, that is not an expense we can pick up. Other than that, we want you to kind of think outside the box. So typically what we say, if you're spending a dollar, just ask if that dollar can be related any way to your business, meaning coaching for the gym, anything that way. Okay. okay. So basically, oh, sorry, go ahead, Logan. No, 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 go ahead. I was going to say, so if you want to buy some new nanos, Craig, go buy some new nanos, and then you get to write them off, right? If you want to buy some new Reebok shorts that or CrossFit game shorts, whatever, Go, write, go buy those and write them off. And you're going to pay less in taxes because you need to have that appearance, like Manny was just saying, to look like a good CrossFit coach. That The members are going to come in and say, I love Craig because he, I idolize him. He is the man. You know? So, and same, same with your other coaches. Craig's probably your best coach, but the other coach. Okay. So. Wait, they might watch this. <laughs> yeah. I don't need any more shoes, though. I already have 10 pairs. Uh, different color maybe right oh i have i have numerous colors i this year alone i think i got six new pairs awesome. so make so make sure you deduct all those you can go back and, and write those off so yeah yeah uh, when i heard that i was like yay <laughs> but do you have a certain way that you're keeping track of expenses right now or well that was my next question is how do you want them to track this stuff okay we actually do have a spreadsheet that I will send out to you. So I'll get your email addresses at the very end. Um, and what it is, it has the basic ideas of the expenses we want you to keep track of. Exactly what I just said, your mileage, advertising. When I say advertising, that is you're advertising yourself. So that's your supplements, your clothing, everything that way. Postage, internet, computer, anything like that. 
So we'll send that over to you, but it does keep track on a monthly basis. And it also, it totals everything up. So you know exactly what the total for phone was for the entire year. So it's pretty self-explanatory, but it definitely does help. So gotcha. If you haven't kept track, what I would do is start in January or whenever you started working at Canon, then go through your statements, your bank statements, and put in whatever expenses relate to the business with what we're telling you. So all the shoes, clothing, everything that way. Now, when it comes time to actually fill out tax documents, do they need to provide any type of proof or just a, a, a I'm claiming $5,000 for this year and, and whatever? Yep, that's all we want to know. So receipts, you would have to keep receipts. So everybody's okay. got like a big envelope for 2017. Dump all your receipts in there. Forget about it. You don't need to organize them as long as they're in one place. Start a new envelope okay. for 2018. But as far as tax time, if you're sending us everything, we don't want all the documentation. We want that one spreadsheet, shows us the totals, that's all we're going to need. Receipts are just in case you get audited. Exactly. Gotcha. Okay. Any questions on other things you can deduct? Um, I guess if you're really like stretching the limits, can the guys deduct a haircut or something like that if uh, that ties into their image or uh, for girls' makeup or anything like that? Okay. Yeah. And, and for you guys, I don't think that's stretching the limit at all. I think that's – that's perfectly normal because like Mandy said, you're advertising yourself. So if I come into the box and I see Craig's got hair down to his shoulders and it's all greasy and stuff, I'm like, I don't know if I like this box, you know? Right. This Craig guy is a little sketchy. <laughs> so absolutely, Cut your haircuts, uh, we even say you guys should deduct your massages. Well, that was my next question, like any type of therapy or? Oh yeah. <laughs> All that stuff goes okay. Yeah, Craig, you could not perform the movements and demonstrating the movements to your class if you're tight, if you're sore. So definitely a massage. Yeah. Write, that, write that sucker off. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, Mills? Um, so just uh, so I can explain this clearly. So personal groceries would be something that is basically like a Walmart or a, a local grocery chain. Whereas if we're calling natural foods, that would be more like your organic stores, like your whole foods. Yes. 100%. And so it's entirely reasonable that if I just tell the guys to do all their shopping at whole foods, they could deduct their entire year's worth of groceries. Yes. We don't want a hundred percent of all of the food that they're buying for their house to be at one store. That's typically why we say, okay, if you do have, you know, a couple of Walmarts, a couple of the natural food, it's, you know, you split it between the two, but we don't want a hundred percent of the food expenses to be coming from the business because the IRS is going to catch on to that. They're going to say, why do you have 20,000 of expenses for food? There's no way that supplements and everything cost that much. So yeah. that's why we do want someone both personal, someone business. What's a uh, safe percentage to stay at? There's no real safe percent for anything. It's keep track of it. If we're going to be doing the taxes, that's what we're constantly looking for. Is this one number going to stick out to the IRS? If we think it's kind of high, we'll reach out to you and say, it's a little high. If you have proof, we'll definitely put it on there, but we would feel more comfortable lowering it a little bit. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. But really, I can deduct all the bacon. <laughs> yeah. Bacon, bacon. Yeah, but really, I mean, if you guys, if one of your coaches did deduct it all in the business, when we looked at the taxes, we would just not take as much. Be like, that was a little high, so we're going to not take as much of a deduction on that. Um, in terms of this, these uh, the envelope full of receipts or the notebook full of receipts, how long do they need to hold on to that to? Five years is what I would hold on for. Okay. I mean, they can scan it onto a flash drive, they can do a digital copy where they don't have to actually hold on to it, and that way it's always there if they do need it, but at least five years for documents. And so even if they leave the business, they need to hang on to that for five years? Any expense you're claiming on that business, hold on to that receipt. Okay. And other expenses, I mean, meals, entertainment. If you guys are going out with some other members or some different coaches or anybody, that is now a business deduction. So for meals, entertainment, I mean, this can be coffee. You're going out for 
lunch or you know getting a quick snack anything like that if it is we would need two purposes one is who you talk to and what it was about how is it related to business but i would typically say on the back of that receipt write down those two items so talk to bob smith a new member it does not have to be a huge explanation it's just if the irs is looking at it those are the two documents the two items that they want to see you said who it was with and then what you talked about? So how it's related to business. Quick explanation. Things traveling, let's say you guys are going to go to the, uh, to the CrossFit Games or if you're going to go down to Florida, maybe it's really a personal trip. Let's somehow link that to business. What I mean by that is maybe you're going out there, maybe you're going to go work out at one of the boxes out there. Maybe you're researching uh, some different equipment. Maybe you're looking at how their gym is set up. Anything to relate that to business, that is now completely business expense. That's everywhere. Rental car, hotels, meals while you're down there. Everything is now business deductions, travel expense. Okay. okay. So yeah, we're really, we're trying to think outside the box. We're trying to eliminate the taxes you're owing because we hate the IRS. We're trying to keep that money in everybody else's pocket. Fair enough. Yeah, any questions on that, on deductions? I don't think so. Craig, you got anything? No, you guys have hit every question I've had. You guys have hit it, so. Yeah. Yeah, okay. We're going to, I'm going to share my screen really quick. We've got a little diagram that goes over how to set up uh, your business entity. You guys see that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So like Mandy mentioned, um, as a 1099 contractor, whether you have a business entity set up or not, um, the eyes of the IRS are going to be taxed uh, our money back in this. Um, so like in this situation here, we have uh, $50,000. For the year you had twenty thousand dollars expenses, so that leaves your uh, business profit as thirty thousand dollars. Now, if you don't set up a business, um, you're going to be this situation here on the left, will be taxed that way by the IRS, and you're going to be taxed two ways. You're going to be hit with the uh, self-employment tax. Uh, which in this situation is uh, four thousand six hundred dollars. Then you're also going to be hit with uh, income tax, which can be anywhere from uh, fifteen to thirty-five percent. Well, what we recommend is the situation here on the right, where you set up a business and then you elect to be taxed as an S corporation. So, so it be like if they set up an LLC for themselves or something like that? Yeah, correct. So you can set up an LLC and then fill out a form to be to elect to be taxed as an S corporation. So you're going to be, so you have to pay yourself a, a wage, a reasonable wage in the eyes of the IRS as the owner of that S corporation. So, and that's the uh, little guy there on the left. You're still gonna be taxed two ways. You're still gonna have the uh, self-employment tax plus the income tax. But as the owner of that uh, business, you also get to take what are called uh, shareholder distribution, where you can uh, basically write yourself a check from the business checking account or you can just transfer money into your personal checking account and all those all those times that you transfer money or write yourself a check those aren't subject to self-employment tax so just by really setting, yeah so just by setting up your own business i mean you can save thousands of dollars just with that just with the uh, self-employment tax Gotcha. You. So you're paying yourself from the business and it's not income as a result? Yes. So in this situation alone, as you can see on the left, self 
unemployment tax, that's you're a 1099. There's no way you can get out of that. So whether you have no entity or you just have an LLC set up, this is how you're paying tax. You are paying 4,600 off the top, plus an additional 15 to 35. You're almost paying 40 to 50 percent tax just on your income you're bringing in from your business. So from your 1099. So option number two on the right. Yes, you are still subject to self-employment tax. There is no way around that. That is payroll taxes. It's all a certain lingo, but it's because you're a business, you're a business owner, you're subject to that self-employment tax. Logan, it's getting taken out of your W-2. That's your mm -hmm. medical, your social security. You are paying that on your total W-2. So being 1099, we're saying, we don't want you to pay all that tax on your entire portion. So this case, 30,000, we want you to save and it's over 3,000 of what you'd be saving just by switching over to the S corporation. So all it purely is, is we're saving on that self-employment tax. Setting up or make sense when you're still showing a profit over 10,000. So Craig, this would be, this would be a question for you. I mean, wherever your 1099 is at, your income, for all your expenses, you're still showing profit over 10,000. That's when it makes sense to be a 1099 or to be an S corporation. So if all of your expenses total enough are showing a loss, then no, you don't need to set up an S corporation. It doesn't make sense. If when you start getting to 10,000 and up, then you're saving more tax than what you'd be paying for somebody to do that additional tax return for you. So you're saying if they're, if they're net profit is over 10,000. That's when it makes more sense yeah. to become. Yeah. Okay. Because I think it's probably gonna be very likely the case that with some of our um, part-time coaches that they're actually going to be claiming more on expenses than they would have actually earned. Um, what happens in that case? So in that case, you don't need to do an S corporation. So but it's not like raising any red flags or anything like that. It's just like, Hey, we operated at a loss this year. So I would recommend still setting up an LLC. So having an LLC set up, it just protects them individually. So let's just say uh, somebody came in, they wanted to sue that specific coach because they did some faulty things, they hurt themselves, and they want to sue that coach personally. If they had an LLC set up, that person that's suing them can't go after any of their personal assets. So not their retirement account, not their personal residence, their savings, checking. If they were to sue them, it's only the business stuff they could get. So basically a business bank account, and that would be it. So having an LLC set up at the minimum is wise to do just because it does protect them. So it's, I mean, it's typically $75 with our states, with Utah to get it registered. I'm pretty sure it's similar, and then it's just, 10, 15 bucks every month that you have to renew it. So nothing changes. It's filed on their personal returns. They don't have any other tax obligations that they would have to look at. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. Do you guys have questions on the entity structure or anything on that way? No, uh, in terms of, of setting up LLC, is that do you guys have steps on those for all the coaches? Do we have steps to... Or like just a, a guideline of how to set up an LLC? Um, so typically you can go on the state's website and yep. it will walk them through the, okay. the LLC setup or they can hire an attorney to do it. But we legally cannot get that set up for you. So okay, if they have questions along the way, if they're getting it set up, I mean, they can call us, we can help them out with any questions that they're... That's fine. I just know a lot of them have not done that before. So, Craig, do you have an LLC or anything set up? Uh, no, ma'am. No? Okay. Do you think, I mean, after what we've been talking about, do you think you're going to be at that point to where if you're still showing over the 10000 for the for 2017? After I'm right at, I'm right at about that line. Okay. So if it's one of those things, I mean, <clears throat> we've now just talked about a lot of additional expenses. So you might be below it. Yeah. This, I mean, if you think you're still, you know, 15, 20,000, you can still implement an S corporation for this year and we can retroactively 
do that. So we can have it as January 1st and have the entire year as an S corporation. So you're saving taxes for the entire year. So whether that's this year, two years down the road, next year, at any time we can elect your LLC to be an S corporation. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what's cool is once you set up the LLC, depending on how your income's looking, you can always go back and set up that S corporate on the time you're back. Okay. So it, it, there's no reason not to set up an LLC. No, yeah, definitely the next step for your coaches should all be to set up an LLC. Okay. In the IRS's eyes, it looks better too, just because <coughs> they look more compliant. Like, yes, I'm getting a 1099. I am a business. I do have my business name. I've got my EIN number, which is like a social security number for a business. So it does look more compliant. There's no red flags. It just, it looks better in the IRS's eyes as well. Okay. But yeah. The biggest um, is the liability protection. Yeah. So that, that follows the individual, not, it doesn't stay at, say, Canon if I was there, if it was there. So if I actually moved somewhere else, it would follow me there? Correct. Yeah, so you, you'll set it up like Craig LLC or whatever you want the business name to be. Mm -hmm. That's yours. That's your entity. So then Canon will start paying your income, your 1099, to your new LLC. Mm -hmm. And so if you were to, if you did any part-time coaching at any other gym, they would, you'd want them to pay your LLC, same thing. Gotcha. And so when those, when those other coaches set up an LLC, You'll just talk with uh, Jeff or Logan, whoever's doing that. You'll start paying the, the LLC instead of their social security number. Okay. Okay. So, and when you do have an LLC set up, getting a separate business bank account open for it helps extremely as well, just because all income goes to one account, all expenses should be coming from that account. So when you're buying your shoes and everything else, use the debit card. Use that credit card that's associated with that business account. That way when you're going through all your statements and your transactions, it's all in one place. You can easily go through and find all your expenses. It's always a good idea to, to reduce what's going between business to personal. We want it business account, just business, personal, just personal. Okay. Okay. The next strategy that we're going to talk about, um, it's called corporate rent. So with this, you would have to have a separate business bank account open, which is why I want to kind of say this ahead of time. So it's such a good strategy, but it is one of those things that you have to have the LLC set up and you do have to have that separate business bank account. So if you don't pay attention to anything else but this, this can save you thousands in taxes. So it's, it's a good strategy. Okay. So yeah, like Mandy mentioned, this, if you only remember one thing from today, this, this is it. This is awesome because it'll help you save thousands of dollars. This is like hitting a PR on like a hero log or something like that. Um, so usually big businesses will rent out like a hotel uh, conference room or something like that, you know, to have maybe say a monthly meeting. Well, we took that concept and applied it to a small business. Uh, so the way it works is uh, basically your business will rent your home from you for say like a, a monthly uh, board meeting or meeting to go over the financial statements, something like that. The, it works because the IRS has um, what's called a, the 14 day rule, which states that if you rent out, um, say your home for 14 days or less for the year, you don't have to even report that income on your uh, personal, on your personal tax return. Hmm. So it really helps you out two ways. It counts as an expense for the business, which will lower your tax liability. And then it's also, you know, income that you don't even have to report to the IRS. You don't even have to put it on your personal income on your uh, personal tax return. So when we're saying business, we're referring to the coach's LLC? Correct. Yeah. 
Yes, it will count as an expense for the coaches LLC. And then it'll be basically free personal income. It's tricky. It is tricky. So it's some really of you, if we were to ask you to tell that to us, how would you tell that to us? And you're all well, let me, let me ask, okay, so I'm looking at this. You're saying that it has to be under 14 days within the year, right? Correct. Now, what am I setting the rate at per day, right? So, like, I'm renting out my own place. How am I determined? Like, I just divide my rent by 30 days, and that's my daily rate, or how is that being determined? So, it's the market rate if you were to go to a hotel and rent out the conference room. So, the average is about $1,250. Where can they find that market rate? So we have a little handout um, that has the rate for Utah in our local area. You can call a couple of different hotels and get, okay, how much is it for the conference room? How much is it to have the surround sound? How much is it to have a projector, um, a lunch serve, that kind of stuff. Um, once again, we can get your email and we can send that over to you where it shows the breakdown of what we're looking at. Um, but market rates, I mean, pretty average, 1250 Okay, gotcha. So basically the way to explain it is for 13 days, just to be safe, imagine that your apartment or your house is a hotel conference room that you are renting out for you at whatever that rate happens to be. Exactly. And that is all, that is all going to be claimed on your expense report along with the same thing as your clothing, your yep. phone. Okay. It's just a rent expense. So when you guys are looking at it, it's just a rent expense. How we gotcha. typically like to do it, I mean, if you have the separate business account set up right now, you could do a transfer every other day. We only want to be seeing about 12 transfers though. So starting in 2018, what we typically say, do one transfer every month. Because it's easy to prove that, yes, we had our monthly get together. We had our one month um, you know, board meeting. So every month it makes sense. And so as long as it's under 14 days, that's the magic number. So that's why we just say, okay, let's do 12, one a month. That's a free, free income, free expense for you guys. It's a good strategy because we're not saying go buy some new uh, dumbbells or new equipment or new outfits. This money is still in your pocket. You get to use it however you want. We're just creating that expense. Now, in terms of uh, that market rate, do I have to provide, or do they have to provide proof of how they determine that market rate? I mean, it sounds like something that could be inflated pretty quickly. Like if I asked for all the bells and whistles on a hotel conference room. Um, if you were audited, you do have to prove how you got that rate. Okay, how do they need to document that? So, cause, so what I'll do, because we'll send out that flyer that shows this is how much it is for food, this is how much it is for how many hours. So I'll give you that expense, um, the transaction list to where you can actually see all the items on that. And yeah, I would get a hold of several hotels just to get different information to see where they're coming in at. And then we basically just take the average of all their rates and call that yeah. the market rate. Okay, the gotcha. We want it the same amount every time. So I okay. don't Transfer. Let's do a thousand today. Next month, let's do two thousand. It has to be the exact amount for the year because it's a paper trail we're creating. So mm -hmm. transfer from business account to personal account. Same amount every time. Okay. Do you have questions on that at all? No, it's uh, it's sneaky, but I get it. It is. Yeah. Sneaky. And like we said. It does, you do have to have the business set up in order to do this. You do have to have that separate business bank account because that's what's creating our paper trail. It has to come from business to personal. Okay. okay. Do you guys have any other questions about anything else? I know we've kind of covered a lot. No, um, I mean, aside from that last part, pretty straightforward. Um, but yeah, no, I, I get the last part. Uh, if you could just send over those documents you were talking about and I can distribute those to everybody. Okay. In the, there's a group chat. If you guys can just put in your email address in that group chat, we'll get the emails. We'll send out the documents to you. And then that way, if you do have 
any questions or Craig, if you want us to talk to you specifically about your situation, I mean, we can definitely get something set up to where we can talk to you about it. Okay. I'm just going to put all these emails in here. Yeah, that'd be great. You going to do mine or do you want me to put yeah. mine? No, I got you, Craig. Okay. So there's four, five right now? Yeah. Yeah, but we're probably going to be hiring two new coaches. They don't even have uh, emails set up or anything. Um, so I'm thinking it's going to be five coaches by the time it's all said and done. Okay. You'll definitely, I mean, you can – have them reach out to us. You can have them watch this video if they have questions on it. I mean, it's there for you guys to use. So, yeah, I'll uh, I'll go and upload this video to our website, and I'll send um, you log. I'll send you a link to it so you can share it with the rest of the coaches for them to watch. All right, that sounds great. Okay. Any last minute bonus questions? Um, no, I think that covers it. Really helpful. I uh, really appreciate you guys doing this for us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, the IRS sucks, so we want you guys to get more money. <laughs> we'll encourage our coaches to be creative and uh, yeah. plan anything and everything they can. Okay, we'll have a good one, guys. All right, awesome. so thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Yeah.